Are you ready for a Brickitech story time? I hope you are, because I've got one for you today. Actually, this is a conclusion to a story that started about a year and a half ago. And as I'm saying this, I'm thinking of a comment that I got recently where a person was like, oh yeah, I remembered. Brickitech has a backstory for everything. And this one, I have to, I have to share this because it's gonna give everything I'm gonna share with you in this video some context. Let's go back a year and a half. My father-in-law is up at his camp and he's talking to a guy that's fishing up there. And somehow, they get on the topic of Lego. And knowing my father-in-law, based on our yard sale experiences, he probably just came out and asked the guy if he has any Lego for sale, because that's what he does for me. When I go up to a yard sale, I look at what they have, and then I retreat to the car. My father-in-law asks people, and then they go in, and they magically have stuff. And I owe like all of my yard sale score success to that man. He is my hero, and everyone knows that Pap is a legend. That's been like a theme that has run throughout this channel. Well, the legend himself ends up talking to this guy, and he has some Lego for sale, some vintage Lego, which when my father-in-law came home and told me about it, I was instantly interested, right? Vintage Lego? Yes, please. So for the first time and only time ever, we drove to this guy's house and he lets us inside, which is just kind of a weird thing. Like going to yard sales, it's, you know, you're in people's garages, you're in their front yards, whatever. Actually going inside someone's house to buy Lego was a, was a whole experience. But we go in there and he has a whole table laid out of all of this Lego stuff. And I went from instantly, like from being excited to being like, oh disappointed because as I looked at this stuff, it was absolutely like just filthy, pieces were broken. There was a lot of stuff there. Like there were like 80 minifigs and he had it all like nicely organized and whatnot. And I was looking at it and I, I like was really close to just bailing on it because I've learned through Lego yard sale halls that if the stuff's filthy, oftentimes it's more work than it's worth. But there was something in that hall or in that lot there that became a hall that in my mind, made the $40 he was asking for all this stuff worth it. And that thing I'm about to build today and I wanna share it with you. So let's take a look at the thing that I was supposed to build a year and a half ago that's finally happening now that I bought for $40 that was filthy, but probably worth it. Now that you survived the backstory, I appreciate that. Let's look at what we've got here. This of course is Lego Pirates 6289. This is Redbeard Runner from 1996. And as I was going through all of that dirty and broken Lego, it turned out that the majority of this set is complete. I had to add a few pieces from my collection and there still might be like one or two pieces that's missing. I know one of like the pirates hats is supposed to be black and I only had a red one. So there is like not 100% complete here, but it is mostly here. The one thing that did kind of set me back here and probably the reason I didn't get this done so soon was these sales. I had two of these and when I found these, they were disgusting. Like they were literally brown. I took these and I put them into like a, a peroxide mixture in the sun and water and they came out a little bit lighter but I was missing one of the sales, a huge setback because these are very expensive. Luckily I have friends here in the Lego community. One guy by the name of Jabbo, also known as Brickzar in some circles, he sent me my missing sale but even with me cleaning these you can see that they're not quite as nice as what uh, a clean sale would look like or a, a somewhat new one. Luckily, I do have replacement sales in here, which I haven't even opened yet. I was saving it for the video. So this sat for like a year and a half as well, but I've got all the pieces here. I've got a manual, thanks to my buddy Platty, who sent me as a Christmas gift, he sent me a replacement manual. The manual came with this, the original one, but it was all torn to shreds. It was dirty, half the piece, pages were missing. And uh, this is a lot nicer to go through and I, I this is, taking me back in memory lane. This is like my childhood here. I think I'm missing one of these. That's what I know I'm missing so far. And I think maybe something else out of here. When I was cleaning this, and you can see that some of it, it's still a little dirty, but again, you can only do so much with it. I was out there with a toothbrush on the deck last summer. I was out there with a toothbrush, <laughs> scrubbing these pieces with dish soap and hot water. And you can only do so much. They were just like, it's almost like they just had this sitting open somewhere in like a, a barn or whatnot. And all this dirt just settled onto everything. So. You know, I'm gonna do the best with what I got here. And I, I mean, I have everything, right? Like it's it's looking good. I do wanna open these sales though and see what these are like. So let's do, a, let's do a haul video in the middle of this. Here is what I ordered. These aren't official Lego ones. These are aftermarket sales. Let me open this up so you guys can see. Here's, here's where they're from if you are trying to get these for yourself or maybe you have a pirate ship with, with dirty sales or missing sales that you're trying to get to. Maybe you could use them. I'm curious to see how they compare though. It's, there's the one, that's the one that Brixar sent me. And this is, I guess the, the best comparison here because his is there and this, oh, I will say the colors are off, aren't they? That's way more blue and that's not a, it's not a camera trick or anything. That is actually 
a color discrepancy there. So that is a little bit of a bummer. So I'm left with, and I, maybe I'll use these, maybe I won't. There's the other one that has the skull and crossbones on it. And there's the one with the, the swords uh, or whatever pirates call them. Some of you pirate detectors are like, Greg, actually, nah, I'm messing with you. I got to decide and maybe I'll, I'll ask people on the stream because I'm actually building this up today on a live stream. And I feel bad because a few of the people have already commented before the stream started and they're like, I've been waiting for you to build this since you got this haul. It's, it's been a year and a half. <laughs> I'm terrible. I'm a terrible person. Um, but here is those ones and those ones. Should I go with the originals, the OGs, and then have it kind of not match a little bit? Or should we just forget about these existing and go with the aftermarket? So I'm gonna let the, the people of the chat decide. Maybe I'll do a poll on there and we'll figure that out. But yeah, that is, that's what I'm getting into today. I'm very excited about this. This has been sitting around forever and I'm just excited to finally crank this out, get it built up. I already have it sold. The guy, Platty, who sent me this, he wants to buy this from me. So I'm probably just going to build this up, make sure everything's complete. And if he's interested in it, I'm going to sell it to him at a pretty good deal. This goes, it originally sold for $99 back in the day. And uh, today it goes for like between two and $300 on eBay, depending on how complete it is. I imagine like this is obviously a setback here. Uh, the aftermarket ones, maybe it makes it worth it, but yeah, dirty pieces and stuff. I don't think it should go for full value, but I'm going to give them a deal on it. I just want to build it and experience it. And then after that, it's, it's just icing on the cake. Speaking of icing on the cake, I don't have a segue here, but I'll see you in just a moment with uh, maybe a partially or fully completed ship. We'll see how far we get today. In my mind, I looked inside this bin with all the pieces that were in it. And I thought, you know what? This is going to take me hour tops to finish this. Well, I just streamed for two hours and this is as far as I got. I'm about halfway through. I think I'm on step 15 or something like that. Uh, so as you can see, we've got a lot to go. That's where I'm at, I believe. Maybe even, maybe even before that. Yeah, we just finished there. Uh, but I'm on step 15, two hours in. It's coming together. It's looking nice. I just streamed the whole thing. Had a great time chatting with everybody. There's the the remnants of that, I just use that to stream if you're curious. But we got lots of pieces and parts here. I have ladders, I had to go on the hunt for these. So I even got into the storage room of Doom and started scouting out parts. These are from that lot, by the way. There's a whole bunch of vintage stuff in here and it came in handy because I, for some reason, did not have these black, like, uh, called them ladders, I guess is what they are. And I had, I had one, fortunately, because I could only find three, but we still got a lot of parts here. Got my sales there. The OG sale people are, are the ones that really wanted to see these as opposed to the replications. So I'll probably go with those. Everyone was enjoying the minifigs and it was just a good time, but that good time is gonna continue because we gotta finish this thing and I think I'm gonna stream more of this as well. There's a lot of people that are surprisingly are very interested in seeing this set done and I'm having a fun time with it. But for you, for you that are watching this video, this is gonna happen very quickly because the next time you see this, Lord willing, this thing is gonna be all completed and I'll be able to show it off and, and marvel at it with you. You might see something behind me here and that is the result of doing another live stream. And then I realized ultimately that it's a lot easier for me to build when I'm focusing all of my attention on the actual build itself and not chatting. So I ended up finishing this on my own. So this will be the first time that anyone other than myself has actually seen this built. And I know you've been waiting for this for a year and a half or at the very least for the length of this video. So let's go ahead and take a look at the finished Redbeard's Runner. I feel like after this video, you guys won't only be making fun of me for the backstories, but also for the hype generation. Alas, here it is, Redbeard's Runner, looking really good, but not 100%. Let me explain. I told you earlier in this video, this guy's cap right here, that's supposed to be black and not red. And as you can see, I have this all set up as they had it on the front of the manual here, trying to create a little bit of a, a scene. There's something else though that I realized very late in the game that was a problem, and that is the sail. No, not because it's dirty. We already identified that. I'm missing some of the ropes that go with this. As you can see on this side, there's there's like these Lego ropes that go up on each side of that. And I'm also missing one off the back. So I didn't have all of those. You can see that right there. But you can still kind of get an idea of what this is going to look like. I wasn't going to halt this video and make a BrickLink order and then ship that in just because, you know, that's a lot. That's a lot more to do off of something that I ideally just wanted to see if it was fully complete. I only put a few pieces from my collection here, very few. So this was all in there. And again, this was a $40 lot that I got. I'll link the video up top if you want to go back in time and watch that. If you want to see where all this hype originated from, but it looks great. Here's the sales. And honestly, the way that these are positioned, it's not too noticeable that that one is much whiter than the others. I think it looks good. And when you get like the little bit of a, the curve on this and the puff that this one has from those ropes, I think that's going to look great. Oh, another issue. I think this part is right. 
This one I only had in black. I had to put my own in there. I didn't have it in the dark gray, so I, I missed out on that. This flag looks really good up here. I love that. Monkey over here. This is what the front looks like with this coming out. And over here, you can actually, you can do a little bit of battle damage. Oh, that was a bad idea. First rule of LEGO reviews, never touch your model. Never do that. We just lost the guy in the plank. He was going down anyway. The magic of movie editing never happened other than the swinging shark that's in the net. I love the way that that looks. You also have these sides that open up as well. So you can actually look inside there. On the manual, this shows the back end of this kind of like blowing apart. So I don't know if that's a play feature or not, but I do know that this comes off up here where the captain is. It actually has like this compass that's on there. I did not have that in my collection before, but you can look down inside there and you can play all over this. This is definitely a play set, but it can also be a display piece too. Imagine that on your shelf. You're gonna need a tall one though. This thing is up there with the flags and the sails, but everything is there and I just think it looks awesome. I'm so ashamed of myself for not having built this back when I got it. This could have been a year and a half ago I could have been making this video for you. This could have went viral back in 2021. It had millions and millions of views, but here we are finally making it. And it's never too late. This is a message to myself and anyone else out there. First of all, just get things done. Don't put things off, just do it. Uh, but if you don't do that, the best time to do something is today. The best time to plant a tree, if you didn't plant it yesterday, is today. Speaking of, I don't have a segue for this either. We've got uh, cannonballs out here, extra ones. We've got a gun. There are some extra weapons down there that, these are really cool. These uh, cannons actually kind of slide out and you can put them out the side here. So you can do a little bit of pirate battling out on the seven seas. I like this on the front too. I don't know if you guys saw that at all but that would be like where your, your mermaid would be or whatever you put on the front of your boat. They didn't do that back in the day, apparently. Uh, but yeah, the, what I realized with this, the manuals, I'm never gonna complain about Lego manuals, not that I ever do other than them being folded. But when you look at these steps, there's I think 35 steps for 700 pieces. That's the size of this set. And really like they don't have the pieces listed up here like you typically find in a modern Lego manual. And it makes it a little challenging to build this. So you're kind of just looking at what you have and then looking at this and deciding if you need to put pieces on. And occasionally you'll get down to this step and be like, where'd that piece come from? Oh, it was up here. And ultimately like I got it done, but going back and forth with like chatting with people and having conversations and then building this, I found it much better just to kind of build this while I was listening to a podcast. And it was actually a really nice experience. It was really cool building something that's vintage, I guess, going back to 1996 being vintage and having that experience kind of going back in the, the, Files of Lego, which is what we did here. And dude, it's great. So Redbeard's Runner, fully completed. Hopefully the hype was worth it, the story, all the things you made it through to see this baby complete. There it is. I appreciate you tuning into this and being a part of my Lego collecting journey, but now we gotta move on to the next thing. And I don't even know what that is, but we've got a lot of stuff to work on. So stick around for a lot more Brickitect content to come. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see you in the next one.